Morning. Uh, it's good to be here this morning. It is nice and sunny out already, which is great. Uh, it is cold <laughs> and there is frost on the ground, so hopefully that doesn't damage too many people's gardens. Uh, I don't know much about frost, but I hear them say there's a frost warning on the news sometimes. Uh, so I, I know that can be a big deal. I went ahead and started my car. I'm going to leave to go to church after this and uh, got the, the frost off of my car. Um, so it's a it's a chilly morning today. <clears throat> but uh, it's funny, you know, coming from the Midwest now, um, Minnesota and Iowa in the past several years, like I'm from the South, but the idea of the, the cold is so relative. <laughs> and it's not hard to, I don't know, have your body acclimate to a different region uh, because I'm I'm a little chilly this morning, but this would be nothing in Minnesota and Iowa. Uh, so it's a it's a funny thing the weather. This morning I want to talk a little bit about Christmas <laughs> because it's right around the corner, um, and then also uh, a, a Christmas or an Advent um, kind of passage from the Bible, and uh, see how it ties into a couple of thoughts about Election Day, and uh, and then we'll. We'll pray, um, try to say a, a prayer for the world. How do you pray on an election day, right? Um, what is a good prayer and what is <laughs> what is not a good prayer? But um, we'll pray and then we'll go about our days and hope that <clears throat> hope that everybody stays safe and well um, and see what today holds. Well, let's start with a prayer too uh, and enter into a good mind to have a, a nice devotion this morning. Let us pray. God, we thank you for sunshine and for birds and even for the chill in the air. Uh, we ask that you be with us today, especially in this moment as we you know, talk a little bit about your word and your will for our lives. Uh, and we give you thanks for the ways that you show up in creation constantly. Um, all the things that you do in our lives and in this world um, to make it a better place, to show your love and to spread it all over. We ask that you fill us up with that love so we can do some of your work as well uh, and to be filled with faith and hope and to let these words that we discussed today fill us up with such things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I, I said I want to talk about Christmas. I, I noticed that the second October 31st was over, uh, one of the stations, I think it's Magic 98.9 uh, radio stations, started playing... Christmas music. <laughs> and it caught me a little off guard. One day in the summer they were playing Christmas music and that caught me off guard too. Uh, this just caught me off guard because it seems like things are moving so quickly. And it's funny because some days seem to drag on forever. And so the, the sense of time has been tough. But this idea that we're already in the season for Christmas music and it's not even that outrageous because it's November 1st. Uh, now it's November 3rd. Um, you know, it's not like somebody's playing Christmas music at the beginning of October or September. <laughs> um, but it's just a, a weird feeling. And so I, I was caught off guard, but I wasn't upset about it. I remember last year I was a little upset that it was moving so quickly that it was almost Christmas. This year, I'm not upset about it. And I was actually filled with some of the joy of Christmas. And I think uh, that's something that I'm very excited about. I don't want to skip over Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorites, maybe my favorite holiday. Uh, I don't want to skip over the, the idea of that. Um, holidays in general are going to look different this year, but the feelings of Christmas or Thanksgiving and those kinds of things, um, the joy, the, the peace, the hope, the sense of togetherness, even if it looks a little different, uh, those are things that I'm really looking forward to. So I'm excited about this. Um, the feeling that that Christmas music, I don't want to, you know, get tired of it yet. So I probably won't listen to that radio station too much. Um, but I, I love this joy and this sense of, um, all these emotions that come with that kind of music. So hopefully that fills us up with some things. And then I just started thinking about Christmas and Advent, you know, what, it, what is it going to look like in our church this year? We had a, a task force meeting to think about, um, what in-person worship would look like whenever it's, it's safe to do so. Um, and when we talked about that, we said, well, how can we offer, continue to offer good virtual worship as well? Um, so I've been thinking about Advent and Christmas a lot anyway. 
in one of the passages that we read during Advent uh, really caught my mind, especially for this election day. So it, it is election day, and I'm I'm not adept at talking about um, politics or political things <laughs> uh, and interweaving them with faith perfectly. Um, and so I, I, you know, sometimes that means I try not to, which is a shame because, um, you know, faith and politics are so intertwined. Pastor John did a great job in his sermon this past Sunday to talk about how, you know, faith kind of leads us in how we do vote and things like that. So if faith isn't, you know, up front in all of the decisions that we're making, then what good is faith? I think uh, not to put words into his mouth, but that that's the thought that was in my mind after his sermon did a great job. So faith and politics are intertwined. Um, but what I want to talk about today is some of the language that I've heard around Election Day um, and and some of the language when we talk about politics, especially when we're having a presidential election, is power. And I, I get so um, uncomfortable with that word and with the sense of power because there are clear differences between people who have power in this world and people who do not have power or people who um, claim power and people who um, are ignored if they try to claim power or act as if they have power. Um, and, you know, in our in our faith, we think about equality and equity, that kind of thing. But there is a lot of talk and there are arguments about power in the midst of an election season. Um, and so those, those kinds of things make me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And so the passage that caught my eye when I was thinking of Advent and Christmas was the Magnificat. And it has a lot to say about power as well. So let me read this. This is from Luke chapter one. It's after Mary is told by an angel that she's going to have this baby, this amazing baby. Um, and Mary goes to visit her cousin, Elizabeth, and says this afterwards. <clears throat> and Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their throne and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promises, that he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. So these are humble words from Mary after she hears this exciting and maybe scary news, albeit uh, incredible news about a baby that she's going to have. And all she can do is, is hope and pray and to believe in God's grace and mercy that have for some reason fallen upon her, right? Um, and there's so much talk about power there. The only one with true power in that passage is God. Uh, none of the people on earth who claim power have any power at all because God casts the mighty down from their thrones, right? Um, that kind of thing. And so the power here rests with God. And so what, I don't know what kind of language we can use around elections and politics that would be appropriate you know I, I don't I don't know what to to call it <laughs> but I do know that this is the kind of passage and this is the kind of thought of faith that that guides me when I do think about politics that it's not necessarily about being the most powerful but it is about creating a world where all people feel safe and uh, where we try our best to feed the hungry with good things, um, where we share the wealth, that kind of thing. Um, and it's it's hard to to vote <laughs> to 
ensure that at all times. Um, but, but that's the kind of thing that uh, I think faith does in us, is it tries to change the way we think about power. It tries to change the way we think about um, what the world should look like and does look like. Uh, and that is my thought on this election day. <laughs> I don't know what, what your thoughts might be. Um, share them in the comments. I, I would love to hear that. Uh, but in the very least, I hope that the joy and the peace and the hope of the Christmas season are the kinds of things that we can feel um, in the coming days and not a sense of division and dread and <clears throat> anger and sadness. I mean, those are natural feelings, but I hope that um, after anything that happens, we just find some kind of joy and peace uh, in the days ahead. God bless y'all. Uh, let's pray and then let's hop into our day, go about our days and see what happens. Um, but again, just share some comments, uh, share your thoughts about such a passage, share your thoughts about power or politics and faith. Um, do whatever you'd like in the comment section. I love to hear what y'all have to say after I'm done talking for a good 12 to 15 minutes <laughs> on these Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, y'all have a lot more insight than me sometimes. So uh, I would love to pray. And again, um, it's hard to pray on an election day, to pray for the right things. Uh, so I'll, I'll do my best, but then I'll leave a little silence for the spirit to work in us, for you to say your own prayers, that kind of thing. So let us pray. God, we surrender our power to you. We ask that you be with us all on this day, that you fill our hearts with love and faith and hope and joy and peace, all of the good things, the things that we talk about during the Christmas season, the things that we're starting to hear about now on the radio. Uh, fill us up with all of those things as we enter such a contentious day. Um, and <clears throat> Help us to lean on our relationships when things get difficult today. Uh, to, to lean on the people who love us and support us and encourage us um, so that we, we don't <clears throat> allow ourselves to be beaten down. We ask that you do the things that you do, um, that you do the things that you said you would do in this Magnificat, that you fill the bellies of the hungry that you lift up the poor and lowly, that you do all those things, um, and that you fill us with an energy to do the same. No matter what happens on this election day, uh, we know that we can always trust and rely on you. So let us do so, and to respond in the very best ways that we can, uh, in faith, in love, in community, in all those things. I'll leave a little bit of silence for you to work your your, uh, your love and faith right here in this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, y'all. I uh, hope you have a good day. God bless. Lots of prayers and, um, and love to you all.